The long-awaited Motion 4 plugin has finally been released and brings with it a lethal arsenal of tools to add to your After Effects tool belt. Motion provides new ways to handle your keyframes and motion, with over 50 tools and custom effects to amplify how you animate. Palette libraries and colouring controls, ways to visually isolate your layers for a futuristic upgrade in how you work and what you see. First, we'll go through everything that's new and then go through a complete breakdown of every feature. The project files will be available to download in the description for free. If you decide to pick up this plugin after watching this video and you want 10% off, there's a discount code in the description. You'd also be helping the channel out. Let's jump in. First, we are gonna cover what's new in Motion 4. Motion 3 provided a list of preset easing curves. However, Motion 4 takes this a step further with custom sliders, shortcuts to change the keyframe interpolation, and the ability to create custom easing libraries. Motion 3 provided this grid of dots to snap your anchor point to a specific corner or edge, but what's new is this Anchor Plus menu which gives even more functionality. Rotation Lock will ignore how you've rotated an object when calculating the anchor point. Include Masks will factor in any masks when calculating the anchor point. To First will set the anchor point of all selected layers to the position of the first layer you selected. To Last does the same but with the last layer you selected. Average sets the anchor points to the average position of all selected objects. And Center moves the selected layers to the center of the comp. These two tabs next to the Anchor Plus menu are also new. The Composition tab provides you a way of changing your comp resolution, aspect ratio, frame rate, and duration in a much easier way, as well as a button to flip the orientation of your comp. Under Library, you can see a bunch of preset resolutions, comp durations in seconds and in frames. The Timeline tab gives you a quick way to scrub through your timeline. Set the start and end of your comp and the playhead position in both seconds and frames. The Swatches or Palettes functionality has been updated with more controls when picking colors and a much nicer UI. You can create palettes of colors with their custom color picker or import a .ase file you created in another Adobe application like Illustrator. The Focus tool has been updated. Simply click to isolate the selected layer which will hide or shy all the other layers. Then click Refocus to unhide them. The Color tab provides new UI and controls for selecting color with sliders for hue, saturation, lightness, transparency, and stroke width. With shortcuts to swap stroke and fill color, eyedropper functionality, one-click white, black, or transparent fills, and the ability to copy and paste colors, this provides a simply crazy level of color control. The Groups tab existed in Motion 3, but now the improved UI makes it much clearer and a joy to use. Group objects in busy scenes so you can select them all in one click, toggle their visibility, lock them, shy them, or for example, grab all the position properties. The third tab here is where you can find all the tools in the Motion 4 plugin. There are quite a few tools here, and I'm gonna go through each one quickly, so strap in. The Shapes tool allows you to select from a choice of primitive shape layers. Let's choose a nonagon. The Texture tool allows you to add textures to your layers. You can either pick from a pre-made library or import your own. I'm going to choose this marble texture. I will leave Precompose enabled, and now you can see it's added a precomposed texture layer. If we come to our effect controls, we can control the position, scale, and rotation of the texture. We can enable dynamics to add a wiggle to the texture and can customize the intensity and frequency of the wiggle below. Speaking of wiggles, this is a good time to introduce the dynamics tool, which adds a wiggle to the selected object. Come to the automation tab and select dynamics with the position property of your shape selected. Now your shape will move around randomly and we can enable the delay checkbox on the texture effect to make it look like it's lagging behind. Motion 4 provides a bunch of small, time-saving features. Rename allows you to automatically rename a bunch of layers in one click, and you can customize the little details on how the name should look. Null will automatically add a null layer at the center of the selected layers. It's useful for transforming multiple layers as one, or if you want to move a layer without disturbing an existing animation. Parent will parent layers in the order that they are selected. This can save you time when creating parent chains. For example, if you know that the feet will be connected to the legs, will be connected to the body, etc. Trash will remove any expressions that are on the selected property. Reverse will reverse the order of the selected layers. Grab will select all of the same property type. For example, if I select the position property of one of the squares, click grab, it will select the position property of all the other layers. And now we can move them about together. You can use the Flip tool to flip your selected layers on any axis. 
Break will break your Illustrator layers into separate shape layers. This is similar to right click, create, create shapes from vector layer. Have you ever tried to copy and paste keyframes from multiple layers and it annoyingly duplicates all the layers instead? The clone tool fixes this by allowing you to select keyframes from multiple layers and duplicate them. In Illustrator, you can break text into shapes by going to type, create outlines, but After Effects doesn't have this feature until now. The text break tool in Motion 4 will break your text into shape layers. Trim will automatically add a trim path to your selected shape, saving you precious clicks. Puppet pins can be annoying to animate as you have to twirl down a million submenus to add a keyframe. The Pin Plus tool will convert your puppet pins into null layers to make this much easier. Have you ever had such a messy project that you don't even know where to start? Well, Motion 4 has a Sort tool which will automatically organise your project into lovely organised folders. Just click Sort, set your preferences, and click Run Sort. And now look how beautiful everything is. I wish I had this tool for my bedroom in real life. The Systems tab provides tools to simplify and manage complex systems. The Animo tool allows you to merge and unify keyframes together. Select your keyframes and click Animo. This will then create a null layer with an Animo effect on it. With this effect, you can enable or disable the animation, loop it, or keyframe the start and end of the animation as a whole. The Delay tool allows you to offset layers without moving the keyframes, which keeps things more organised. Here I will select the position property of one layer, then shift select my other layers and click Run Delay. Now you can see each layer is delayed after the last. You can change the delay percentage as well as a bunch of other advanced properties. Echo is similar to the built-in echo effect in After Effects, but provides more control. Here I have a circle rotating around a null, so I select my rotation property and click Run Echo. If we open the effect control, we can enable and customize our echo delay precisely. We can also enable color to add a color shifting effect to each echo. Falloff enables you to manipulate properties with spatial attenuation. For example, if I wanted to have each dot grow in size, the closer my controller gets to it, I would select the scale property of my first layer, then select the rest of my layers. Click Falloff. This creates a controller. Under the controller's effect controls, change the falloff scale values to something higher, like 60. Now, as I drag my controller over them, they increase in size. You can also increase the size of the controller and the falloff value. This can enable you to create some cool procedural animation. Cloth allows you to simulate dynamic cloth physics in After Effects. For example, here I have my friend Billy, but his cape is a bit stiff. To loosen it up for him, let's add some puppet pins to the cape. Two around the shoulders, where we will pin it, and four down the length of the cape. With the puppet pin selected, click Cloth. This creates a new layer called Cloth. Under the effect panel for this layer, twirl down the Position Dynamics effect, Advanced, Dynamics, and enable the checkbox. You should see the cape flapping about. Now to pin the shoulders, unshy all the layers, go into the Cloth Children pre-comp, find the two shoulder pins, twirl them down to find Magnetism, and toggle Enabled and Mirrored to On. And now our cape is attached to Dear Billy's shoulders but it's blowing about way too much, so let's decrease the dynamics amount to 50. Motion 4 also provides lots of effects to bring your animations to life. Burst creates a simple radial burst rig. Just click Burst, and then in the effect panel here, we can control pretty much everything, like number of copies, offset, distance from center, revolution, color, width and height. I would just play around with these and see what you can create. Spin adds an expression to the rotation property of your selected layer, which makes it spin on the spot. Excite adds inertia or bounce to your keyframes, automating something that can be tricky to animate by hand. Just select your layer, click Excite, then you can tweak the overshoot, bounce, and friction. Jump simulates a bouncing or jumping animation. Again, something which is time consuming to do by hand. Just highlight your keyframes and click Jump. Under the effects panel, you can tweak the gravity, max jumps, and more. Trace will draw a trail behind your layer. Just select your layer, click Trace. You can then go into the Tracer pre-comp, select the layer and open the effect panel. Here you can modify loads of properties like radius, velocity, gravity, and more. Set gravity to zero. And now let's come back to our parent comp. And this line is gonna help us look at the Blend tool. The Blend tool smooths out your animation. So if we select our circle and click Blend, you can see how the Tracer line now doesn't match the path of our animation. That's because Blend is averaging out our path. If we increase the smoothness, the line is averaged out until it is almost a straight line. The Orbit tool allows us to make layers rotate around a center point. Let's create a simple solar system. Duplicate our sun here four times. Use the Rename tool to rename them to planets. Select all the planets and click Orbit. 
In the effects panel for each planet, you can change the distance, calibration, and speed until they all have different orbits. Vary the planet's scale and color, and then tweak again so they don't have overlapping orbits. Stare makes the selected object rotate towards or look at another object. Let's create a null, select our face, click stare, then set our null as the target under the effect settings. We then need to change the calibration until our face is looking at the null, and now we can move our null around and the face will follow. Vignette simply adds a vignette to your comp, which you can customize. Warp allows you to create a liquidy effect. If you have multiple shapes on the same layer, you can select it and click warp. Now let's add some dynamics to the position property of each shape to make them wiggle around. You can then tweak the effect properties to make it more or less liquidy. Right now this only seems to work with many shapes inside the same shape layer and not with separate shape layers, so just bear that in mind. So that is a complete sum up of the Motion 4 plugin. I think you'll agree it's a bit of a monster. I don't even want to know how much time it's saved me over the years. Like I said at the start, if you want 10% off, there's a code in the description. You'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Peace.